In this video, I read a physical report of investigation by the County Medical Examiner of Nashville, Tennessee. This is an official document. It's put together as a factual report documenting exactly what physically happened to well-known public figure performer Ellen Naomi Judd. This video is to inform and educate. In no way is it intended to glamorize or shock and certainly not to promote or encourage any actions. I have to say uh, ahead of this that I've got to thank my friend Randy Bridges for uh, sending this document on to me. It's an important document. It's, it, it documents the last thing somebody did and, you know, not glamorous, clearly, but uh, it's, it's historic. I mean, it, this, is, this is an important document, so uh, I'm going to start reading it. And this is from the uh, Office of the Medical Examiner. Actually, it says, the purpose of this report is to provide a certified opinion to the County Medical Examiner and District Attorney General. The facts and findings to support these conclusions are filed with the Tennessee Department of Health. So this is the autopsy on uh, Naomi Ellen Judd, and she was 76 years old. And the um, I'm just going to go into the to the details. The, the decedent was a 76-year-old white female who was discovered unresponsive by family in the residence at approximately 10:57 a.m. on April 30th, 2022. 911 was contacted. Emergency medical services responded to the residents and transported the decedent, meaning uh, Naomi Judd's a body, to the Williamson Medical Center. Shortly after arrival to the emergency department, death was pronounced at 12.35 p.m. on April 30th. Medical examiner jurisdiction was accepted to determine the cause and manner of death. Middle Tennessee Removal Service transported the decedent's body to the Center for Forensic Medicine for further examination. Final disposition arrangements were unknown at this time, meaning they don't know where the body was going to head after this, if it was going to be cremated or go to a you know cemetery or, or whatever. But it was actually the funeral home, interesting to note, was Neptune Society. And generally, those are the people who cremate and scatter in the ocean. So at the time, Naomi Judd was wearing... Uh, a white shirt cut, a tan bra cut, and white pants that have a safety pin in the waistband in the front of the pants. A blue robe, two white shoes, a blue bed sheet was brought in, and a pillow with a blue pillowcase uh, accompany uh, Naomi Judd. Her hands are not bagged, meaning they're not uh, holding, you know, putting bags over the hands so uh, to preserve any sort of residue that might be under the fingernails if there was an assault or something like that it might be evidence if there was a crime but there wasn't a crime uh being you know there wasn't a crime so they didn't bag her they didn't bag her hands now this is interesting kind of i mean it just describes the medical procedures that she had and uh the the head is normal and the scalp has long brown hair in normal distribution. There's short gray hair along the anterior hairline. A continuous linear scar extends from the right temporal region of the scalp, just anterior to the right ear, superiorly across the top of the scalp and onto the left temporal region of the scalp. Basically, this means she had a facelift. Um, she had her skin uh, tightened, as well as a uh, scar to the bilateral eyelids, so she had her eyes done as well. Uh, the corneas are slightly cloudy. The slurry, uh, slurry, sclery, scleries, uh, that's the eye whites, are white. Um, the, the right eye is slightly deflated. The nasal septum and nasal bones are intact. The ears are pierced, but otherwise unremarkable. The teeth are partially natural. There is an artificial de den den de de dentition across the anterior most portion of the gum line. So, uh, and the neck and chest are symmetrical. The left side of the submental space has a linear scar. The nipples and breasts are symmetrical and have had palpable breast implants. So she's had face work and, uh, and her, uh, her, her, and she had breasts uh, surgery done as well. Uh, the extremities, tummy tucks, okay. Abdominal quadrants, uh, continuous linear scar extends uh, bilateral hips, yeah, so she had a tummy tuck as well, and God bless her, I would if I could. 
the extremities have no fractures, lacerations, or deformities. The joints are not deformed. The left arm has multiple irregular scars. The wrists have no scars. The arms have no track marks. What appears to be the words suitcase are written in faint pen ink on the palm of the left hand. The fingernails have apparent French tipped acrylic nails in place over the natural nails. There are linear, vertically oriented scars on the bilateral knees as well. Okay, so she had, uh, she had her knees done as well. That's a thing too, having like your knees lifted. Uh, I, I didn't know that until very recently, but that is a procedure you can have to make your knees look nicer. And, um, and she had her toenails with pink polish. And she had normal, you know, female parts. Nothing, nothing looked abnormal there. Now, tattoos. A monochromatic tattoo extends across the anterior aspect of the hairline on the superior most aspect of the forehead. Basically, she had a tattoo line across her forehead, and Michael Jackson had that too. So if you wore a wig, you wouldn't be able to tell. You wouldn't be able to see the wig line because you had a tattoo of a line across your hairline. You know, it wouldn't be like right in the middle of the forehead. It'd be at, at the original hairline. So, uh, so yeah, that I found that kind of interesting. I didn't know that that was a... I know Michael Jackson did it. Uh, there are monochromatic tattoos on the... Her eyebrows are tattooed and upper and lower eyelids and upper and lower lips. So she had her eyes tattooed, her eyebrows, her lips, and her hairline tattooed. A nasal flute within the right nares. An endo and duck okay, this was uh, evidence of men medical intervention. So she was brought in with an um, endotracheal tube in from her mouth, so they had worked on her, attached to a bag, an ambu bag. An oral airway is secured uh, with a plastic strap encircling the head. So she had, you know, breathing apparatus when they brought her in, when they were trying to, to save her life. Multiple electrocardiogram lead pads and defibrillator pads are adhered to the body. Um, an IV bag of sodium chloride was attached. A band-aid band encircles the left second toe. So this part of it is, is, is really kind of technical and is kind of gruesome because we're describing the actual wound that caused her death. And as we know, uh, Naomi Judd ended her life on, you know, it was her own decision to end her life in her home. And, uh, and so it was evident by the sound that uh, people that were in the house, family members, heard the sound of Naomi doing it and they ran up and, and found her. So this is the definition or the, the actual uh, description, technically, of the wound that caused her death. A projectile perforated through the right side of the scalp and entered the skull through an entrance type gunshot wound, two and a half inches below the top of the head and four and three quarters inch to the right of the uh, anterior aspect and the midline of the right temporal bone. The one by one centimeter defect has internal beveling and soot deposited within the bony edges of the wound. I mean, this is, it's very actually, it's so technical, and um, I mean, temporal, parietal, parietal bones, parietal bones, occipital bone. It's there's a lot of technical stuff. I can just bear, basically tell you, um, and I know that's a term Judge Judy hates, but uh, basically, this is what happened: the bullet perforated through the right side of her scalp and entered the skull through an entrance type gunshot wound. And it was pretty, the projectile then perforated through the front, frontotemporal regions in the bilateral cerebral hemispheres. The projectile perforated through portions of the bilateral bas basal ganglia or basal ganglia. There are parietal hemorrhages that radiate out into the white matter of the brain in this area. The projectile then exited the skull through an exit type gunshot wound, two inches below the top of the head and five and a half inches to the left of the anterior aspect of the midline of the left parietal bone. The three by 2.5 centimeter bony defect has external beveling and no soot deposition. It's the projectile then exited her scalp through an exit type wound uh, one and a half inches below the top of the head, four and a half inches to the left of the anterior aspect of the midline 
near the left temporal region of the scalp. Boy, no soot or stippling are associated. The wound does overlie an open skull fracture with visible brain matter. No abrasions are associated with this wound. No projectile fragments are recovered from the path of this projectile. Whew, man. So the direct path of the projectile, meaning the bullet, is from uh, right to left, slightly upward and slightly back to front. Internal examination. The clavicles are intact. The diaphragm is not elevated. The mesothelial surfaces are smooth and glistening. All body organs are in their normal anatomical position. The soft tissues of the neck, including strap muscles and large vessels, have no abnormalities. The hyoid bone, remember we talked about that really recently with the Karen Cups in it thing. The hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, and larynx are intact. The toxicology I'll talk about in just a second. That's the when they analyze the blood to see if there's any drugs or anything in her system. It says blood, urine, and vitreous humor are submitted for toxicological analysis. So I'll get to that. And gunshot residue was also collected. This is the summary of the case. The decedent is a 76-year-old female who was discovered unresponsive in her home by family. She had an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound and was transported to Williamson Medical Center where she was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. The decedent had a past medical history significant for anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, chronic idiopathic pneumonitis, pneumonitis, hepatitis C, hypertension, and hypothyroidism. Per family, the decedent has had private thoughts of doing this uh, and, and recent life stressors. A weapon and note with suicidal connotations were found near the decedent at the scene. The toxicological analysis on the postmortem femoral, femoral blood detected caffeine, atomidate, and, and atomidate, seven amino clonazepam, primidone, venlafaxine, odesmethaventafaxine, <laughs> wow, MCPP, trazodone, and memantine. Wow. So I found that this there is a list of the drugs that were found in her system, and I found a little description of each of the drugs that were found in her system. And the aminoclonazepam is treated for insomnia and in prevention and treatment of various seizure disorders. Memantine, uh, also it's a uh, to treat Alzheimer's disease inhibitors to treat Alzheimer's disease. Memantine is also uh, under deficit hyperactivity disorder, neuro neuropathic pain, HIV-associated dementia, and multiple sclerosis. It has de demonstrated effectiveness as a mood enhancer in clinical trials. So that was the memantine. Now the Desmethylvania vaccine. Wow, I'm going to have to. I'll show you pictures of these things. Used uh, as an antidepressant since 1994. Primidone is used for in the prophylactic management seizures. Is uh, it is available? Blah, 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 the dosage regimens individualized. So. Um, yeah, it is an anti-convulsant used in the prophylactic management of seizures. So it controls seizures and minimizes adverse effects. Trazodone, another antidepressant for the treatment of major depression. Trazodone causes an increased risk of suicidal ideation and behavior, especially in children and young adults. Uh, ven venlafaxine, antidepressant agent. She's been on a lot of antidepressants. And lastly, MCPP. This was the most fascinating. I looked this one up. My friend Donna and I were talking about this. And although it, it did say at one point it was for treating alcoholism, but in this description that they, uh, that they put in the autopsy report, it uh, has similar subject, it has caffeine, 
that's caffeine that showed up in her uh, in her autopsy report earlier. I was wondering, well, why would coffee or something like that show up in an autopsy report? But it's caffeine, and this is, I think, the source of it. Is it um, MCPP? And I'm not going to even bother with that name. How to pronounce it? Has a similar subjective stimulant and hallucinogenic effects as MDMA. But unlike MDA, MDMA, it has not been found to increase blood pressure or heart rate. Reported adverse symptoms include nausea, vomiting, dizziness, sweating, migraine-like headache, anxiety, depressive symptoms, and paranoia. So she was chock full of these drugs, and they were all prescribed. And I don't, you know, I wouldn't say that she was, um, you know, a uh, flippant. I can't say I didn't know the woman. I liked her when I was uh, when I was a DJ at the Country Western Station in 1984 or 83, 84, I think. The Judds were just coming up on the on the charts with "Why Not Me," and I loved "Why Not Me," and I loved you know "Papa, He's Crazy," and I loved you know "Tell Me About the Good Old Days," and, um, and I really I really liked the Judds a lot. I uh, I paid the twenty dollars for their pay-per-view last concert ever and I knew back then when they had that last concert ever there was going to be a reunion tour and there was going to be a reunion tour actually there was and she only did a few of the gigs um Wynonna and Naomi Judd were going to be inducted to the to the, to the country music hall of fame the very next day and I guess I don't know I can only guess the stress from all of this attention and and what was going on in, in her mind and I, I, I think her, she had a very complicated relationship with her daughter. There was a note left behind that wasn't a, a very nice note. Uh, and towards Winona about just talk, accusing Winona of being unstable herself is an ugly way to go. And it left a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of residue, you know, literally and figuratively because there are choices to make and there are people you can contact. It's flippant for me to say that because I've never been in that situation, thank God, but there is, there, you know, there are people. I know that and I hope you do too. Uh, yes. So, you know, talk to people if you need to. But God bless Naomi Judd. I liked her so much. I really did. I hope she's uh, at peace and I hope her family is at peace.